Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha, my name is Jeez. I'm an old composer here at the Decomposer Lounge. World Music, yes, this is the World Music channel. I have another one that's heavy metal and rock and roll. Almost a couple hundred thousand subscribers there. Uh, but this is my journey going around the world and listening to all kinds of music. May not be in the literal description of what world music is, but I do cross from cultural sounding music um, all the way to, you know, pop, current, contemporary. So that's why I'm calling it my world music channel. Uh, Lindsay Sterling, the song is called Sleepwalking. Um, she apparently is a violinist and uh, I did, I wanted to kind of get a little use, so I saw one of her other videos, so I know that what I'm in for um, as far as uh, uh, composition skill and everything of that nature. And uh, so this was suggested to me. Uh, what I love about the opportunity to do this on this young lady is the fact that my whole life and generations before me of composers it's been about orchestral works, it's been about orchestrating, it's been about writing, it's been about conducting music, media, film, TV. My father's whole career raising all of us and ending up in the most beautiful place in North LA County, overlooking the beach on one side and the back valleys on the other is because he was a string arranger. And I'll put his link down below, but everything from Michael Jackson to Sinead O'Connor, Toby Keith to TV shows, uh, I, just so many artists you can check you can see why in here this resonates with me is get the opportunity to see um, uh, art uh, instrumentalist artists especially with um, violins uh, any, anything from an orchestra even if it was a bassoon you know uh, doing an instrumental I would be all lit just to get the opportunity to hear it which I hope maybe there is is there is there anybody out there with a, a bassoon soloist uh, doing progressive music uh, or not I don't know Anyhow, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to bring you my opinion. You know, if you see any commercials or any ads on this, it doesn't help me with the uh, monetizing of the channel. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, the link is down below. It also helps what I do with the kids as a uh, hospital entertainer and children's enter entertainer, uh, some of the stuff I do for nonprofit works. Anyhow, so that's my story. Cup of coffee, link down uh, below if you'd like to support. This is Lindsay Sterling, Sleepwalking. All right. This is wonderful. I, I love this 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 approach. Um, well, I'm going to start with the very beginning, uh, and then I'm going to I'm going to glow on her at the end of my little breakdown here. First of all, if this is the first time of your channel, I do not do a theoretical breakdown. There are other composers and music theory guys who do that kind of stuff. My thing as a composer is coming from the organic visceral response of listening to something and then being able to kind of enjoy it without letting the theory mind take over but yet peel back enough to maybe you know you enjoy the song maybe I shed a little light on something first thing I want to bring up though is the unique um, ethereal approach of this whole production thus far uh, a lot of it is based on uh, the use of digital delays and reverb if you listen to that opening piano listen closely there's a little digital delay in there and that gives us the sense of ambiance, um, an ethereal sounding, meaning long and spacey, and being able to drift into an abyss of whatever joy music may, may bring. In this case, it's beautiful, it's floating, it's very lifting. Um, and then there's a little pad that's holding just a little bit of, you know, really nice little voicing 
this little pad that's behind the piano uh, that, that sets the tone for the width. And when I mean the width, I'm talking about left-right experience of listening to it in here. So as the composition starts, as she comes in, it sounds as there's a very Celtic kind of vibe to this composition. And uh, so far, it seems like, like she opened up with the, um, with, the, uh, with the hook passage, you know, but maybe an octave lower at the very beginning, the notes of the hook, which to me, the hook is something that repeats itself a few times if it's a pop contemporary composition. You know, in a three and a half minute to four and a half minute song, you want to bring that hook and that awareness and sometimes you wait for the minute. You know, there's an old saying, in it within a minute to win it. Uh, if you want a song to be successful, you get into that hook. And that way it can be repeated a couple times. But in this case, it seems to be um, a, a through theme thus far. I love her articulations and dynamics as she's playing through. And uh, very, very important, the slides and stuff that's going on. Yes, there are classical uh, names for all that, but since we're doing kind of like a pure listener breakdown, that's what I like to call it. Beautiful slides and those articulations and dynamics and stuff, which breathes the instrument forward, especially in an organic composition. Something else that I really love is now, of course, this is a hybrid technical composition. And uh, so you have the traps that come in or the synth drums, if you would, you know, that little, uh, you know, quarter note that comes and gets you the kick, kind of locks you into it and stuff. But what's really cool is there's a pulsing it sounds like an overcompressed pulsing vibe that adds to that ryth rhythmical arrangement. And that could be, you know, whatever patch that the uh, composers or the musicians, producers, sometimes it's all in one, is using, you know, for the chord changes there, it's doing this, woo, woo, this kind of breathing vibe to it and stuff. And it, it seems like it's an intricate part of the patch that they've used here to give it that kind of heartbeat feeling. And then finally, before I go on, I can't help but watch the video. And something else that I love is when musicians have the capability to express themselves in the physical nature. Obviously, she's uh, very expressive in her dancing, and, and maybe she even choreographed this, I don't know. But very that, that physical expression along with playing the instrument is so important, especially in a visual sense. But a lot of times, if you watch musicians, I don't care who, bass players, drummers, oboe players, piccolo players, percussionists, harpists, whatever. When you real part of the enjoyment of watching a musician perform their instrument is to watch their body go through changes. You know, you know, facial expressions from doing a solo or raw, you know, drummers are doing this, but even more amazing to me and so wonderful to watch is <laughs> excuse me, go watch a Philharmonic, but watch it on YouTube when you have the cameras that lock off on the, you know, the, the brass section or the trumpet section or trombone or the double basses or the violins and you could see the, the musicians getting into it and stuff. They don't just sit there and go, eh, 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 eh. you feel that energy come through and this is what I love about what I'm seeing. I know this is a music video, but I'm pretty sure that when she's playing live and stuff, she exudes this kind of energy. Anyhow, that was a very long stop. I apologize. No, I don't apologize. That's my channel. This is what I do here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Let's keep going. stop on that. Um, a couple things first I want to talk about. Um, 
the essence of what we feel when we listen and when we listen to this track and you know good speakers good headsets and stuff and the experience of that ethereal um kind of feeling and ambient has to do with the kind of reverbs that are being used now this is heavily uh she has a really glassy reverb on her um on her track and it sounds like there's a little pre-delay which means the reverb doesn't kick in immediately it sounds like i can't really kind of makes me feel that way but she has like a long two like it's a two second haul like maybe it could be a cathedral sound you know nowadays with technology compared to the days you know when my dad was in the studio and then i kind of trended it in the studio in the 70s and stuff like at a and m records for instance i'm sorry capital records you know there's a chamber below the parking lot that were used to generate you know a reverb of sorts nowadays we have modules and we got all kinds of great options and stuff but this is a very glassy kind of sounds like it could be a cathedral long beautiful uh, reverb on it um, another thing that i've noticed uh, through this journey is that she obviously does her own uh you know secondary arrangements sometimes it could be a harmony to what she's playing in her melody or a sec or or another arrangement that lights up just like what we just heard in this passage you saw me get all like oh oh what's wait wait what huh and you can hear this blooming of another arrangement coming in and, it, and it, there's an engineering technique that it could be the way she was also playing the violin as well as blooming the sound through messing around with sometimes we call it could be called a telephone telephone style EQ. You pull down certain parts of the EQ and you you kind of mute this and that arrangement was blooming and blooming. As it bloomed, the EQ changed a little bit. You know, that could be done in automation, it could be done, you know, with the engineering. And that by the time that that other arrangement came through, it matched the power of her, you know, principal melody. And I really, really loved it. And then you may have seen me go ding ding ding. Well, I was thinking pizzicato, but there's a nice little ta that arrangement in there that I thought was really fun very lifting and stuff and then finally I I am looking at the video and boy they put in a lot of work in this this is a lot of choreography and stuff and it flows beautifully um, and I know a little bit about choreography my brother was a very successful choreographer and uh, you know danced with Whitney Houston and had done some stuff on in New York and traveling around so the, the world of choreography to me is not something that's uh, you know Hmm, not too sure. So I'm watching this and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, the choreography that's been done here as well as the performance on the video. So let me see if I just can't shut up now. And we'll just get through the rest of this. I'll go back a little more. So here we go. Stop, this might not be the end. <laughs> wow, that was really nice. That was great production decision there to um, fade it out that way. A really great example of what I was just saying about the use of post effects to create the ambience is that little bit uh, that very last um, um, voicing group of uh, uh, strings that, or, or maybe it was a keypad, I can't, I'm trying to recall. If you just listen to that, da, 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 how it faded in the back, but it still kept the width of, of, it, of the ethereal ambient sound and stuff. And so though that's probably one of quite a few different layers of uh, post effects that were used to generate that kind of feeling. Um, so anyhow, this was wonderful. I really love this. I love this, the technique of combining, 
you know, a beautiful instrument like the violin with technology and stuff like that for this kind of composition and expression. And I'm sure she probably has many, many tracks that a lot of you are probably going to want me to listen to uh, moving forward, which I will do. Please leave those suggestions in my comments. As well, I'm going to put the link for my father's... Um, uh, he's passed away now over 10 years ago, but for his discography, because, you know, I, I did realize while I was listening, oh, man, I mentioned I kind of name-dropped and stuff. I want to just make sure I can back the play. I know how people can be sometimes out there. So his discography is down there. Warning, you're going to see a picture of me. Obviously, that's not my credits, okay? Um, that, I don't know why these people have a picture of me there, and I've tried to email them and say, hey, can we fix this? And I haven't heard back. Anyhow, thank you guys for hanging out. I know it's been a while since I've done a video. Thank you for your support. If you decide to buy me a cup of coffee, that link will be down below. And also, I'll put a link down below about the stuff I do with the kids, just in case you're curious about that part of my life as well. So you guys take care. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for going on this journey with Lindsey Sterling with me on the song Sleepwalking. All right, guys, take care. Aloha.